Hello, buddy. Welcome to the Freelance Writer's Guide. I'm Colleen Welsh. I'm a freelance copywriter with seven years of freelancing experience and 10 years of copywriting experience. I've worked with clients like Olay, Gucci Beauty, Milani, Gillette, blah, blah, blah. We're doing another AI review today. Thus far, I have reviewed ChatGPT and Write Sonic. Today, we are talking about content at scale. I would like to thank Legalized Pigeon for leaving this comment and asking me about it. They said their AI is scary and seems promising. Well, today, we will get into that. I bought a subscription to content at scale today. So please keep watching so I didn't spend $250 for nothing. So I'm going to show you some different articles that I use content at scale to write and give my honest opinion on them as we go along. And then I'm actually going to post one of them on my website for you to have a look at. It's completely unedited and you can let me know what you think. So without further ado, let's get started. It's a free Lance Writer's Guide. You have to give them your email address. Great, so they're just gonna email me all the time now for a link for access. So this is content at scales pricing, which is outrageous. There's no free trial, so I will be spending $250 plus tax to try this and make this video. I will be shocked. I will be shocked if this is good because other AI platforms I've used and I've tried ChatGPT many times and I also tried Write Sonic. I did a review of that here. It's terrible. ChatGPT is better than Write Sonic, but they're both really bad. <laughs> and in my opinion, don't pass for real human written content. It's all about about opinion, right? And I just feel like there is a certain personality type that just wants to watch the world burn. <laughs> and that includes like letting AI take over and put a bunch of people out of work and let's get rid of museums, like an art created by people and just make it AI. I, like, I don't know why people want this, but I think it's just so they can feel something. Anyways, so I do feel like a lot of content that is created about the power of AI and how, especially like how good it is all, how good it is already is created by people like that. I'm not like that. I'm not like necessarily like anti-AI. I don't want to see AI replace like art. I'm just like, let's just see how it goes. I don't know. I don't have like an opinion on it one way or another besides the art piece. If you bring it up to me, I will cry. Yeah, so this is what you get with each tier of pricing for content at scale. It is quite expensive, I would say, for an AI, especially considering like ChatGPT is completely free. As far as like the way they break it down, I would say, yeah, five cents a word is cheap, but you can definitely hire people that will except five cents a word, will it be good? No, probably not. You might find a diamond in the rough, but it probably won't be good. And 12 cents a word, you can find lots of people who will charge that much that are good at writing. Economically, I don't know that this would really make sense unless you were able to pay like these higher prices. Cause I know for a fact that you can find people in this range. Some other limitations I've experienced with AI is it just doesn't have like a good depth of knowledge on any subject. It's a generalist, at least anytime I have hired out for a writer. I was looking for someone who like really knew their stuff. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second and put in my credit card information and then we'll continue. By the way, if you're like, where are your glasses? I don't know. I don't know where my glasses are. So I guess I just won't see and I'm farsighted. So it's like really hard for me to focus on a, the laptop. Maybe if I, my arms are so short. Let's make a post. How do we do it? Create a project for my team. This is interesting. They're asking to see the URL where this will be published. So I'm wondering if it is connected to the internet because ChatGPT is not connected to the internet, which is why it hallucinates. I'm just gonna write a post for Glossy type, the best AI output. Each website where the content will be published should be its own project. 
Got it. Um, what is this website about? This is a content marketing agency for the beauty industry. I guess I should say this website is a content marketing agency, is for target audience marketing professionals in the beauty industry. Let's just say one monthly post, and then you can choose a tone of voice, including authoritative, bold, casual, dramatic, excited, feminine, grumpy. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Let's just say informative. That sounds good. It'll be in English. It gives you a word count range and the default is 2,000 to 3,000 words, which is quite a long post. That's pretty long. So I have created this project and I need to add content. How would you like to create your long form blog post? The options are from a keyword, from an existing blog post URL, from a YouTube video, from a podcast episode, from a custom audio file. If this could make blog posts from my YouTube videos, I need to find my content calendar for Glossy Type. I think for the Right Sonic review, I also use the keyword cosmetics market. So to be, you know, apples to apples, which might I remind you that was completely unusable. I'll just use that same keyword cosmetics market. Okay, what keyword do you want to rank for? I would like it to talk about the state of the cosmetics market in 2023, opportunities for brands and advertisers. Include opportunities for brands and advertisers. Okay, create content now. Let's do it. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, it says to check back in a few minutes. Well, Peaches is outside. And she's been outside this whole time. So let's see what she's doing. I wonder how long it'll take. Right now it's 1.15 p.m. So, all right. I look good. I thought I was like getting old and ugly, but I guess I just haven't been wearing a full face of makeup. Cause I was like looking at, I mean, I'm definitely getting older. Who isn't? But I was looking at um, like old YouTube clips of myself and was like, I've aged so much in three years. But now I'm like, I was just wearing foundation and now I wear tinted moisturizer. But today I wore foundation. Let's see what Peaches is doing. Camera loves you, Peaches. Do you feel spicy? No. You're ready for another nap. Okay. Just walking around. Okay, is this done yet? How long is this gonna take? It's been three minutes. How long does content at scale take? Anyways, if I were writing a post this length, it would probably take me like three or four hours to do. It will generate an entire ready to publish article within just a few short minutes. I'm just realizing now, like if this works, and then I post this video on YouTube and it does well. Am I putting myself out of a job? Or will this be a tool for my agency to use? Now that I've just discovered that I'm beautiful again, I can still get married for money. So there's always that option. I guess I've zoomed in too much. Check this out also. Isn't this dogwood nice? That dogwood was probably planted in the 1920s when this house was built. Why am I talking about this? So it's now 129 and I would say about at 128. The status changed on this and now it says ready for optimization. So that was 13 minutes. Let's check it out. What do I have to do now? How do I optimize it? What do I do? What does that mean? What does ready for optimization mean? This means it's written and ready for editing. Click the title and open the editor. <laughs> okay, that's not. I can't click the title. Why is it locked? What does this little key mean? Oh, now you can click it. Okay. This is 4,600 words. And now I have to read it. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna read this. My problem is whenever I read AI generated content, I feel like I can't focus on it. You know what I mean? Like it's like just so boring. It, it like lacks something that pulls me in and I'm already completely bored by this. And maybe it's because I chose the informative 
voice. Maybe I should have chosen something like more entertaining. Okay, already this is providing a better, like better insights into the cosmetics market than the Right Sonic one, which was like literally talking about the rise of social media and e-commerce. Yeah, maybe that would be something people were talking about like 15 years ago. Well, this is saying rising online sales. <sighs> I don't know. I just feel like that's not like groundbreaking, like earth, like florals for spring. <laughs> rising online sales. Evolving consumer preferences. No kidding. What an opportunity that they're presenting is optimizing the website for mobile devices and engaging with customers through social media platforms like Instagram or TikTok. Duh, like still not earth shattering. With a, like this type of article, it's more than just regurgitating present information. We actually are requiring new fresh ideas and like interpretation of information in order to have new insights. So I guess there's not gonna be new insights in this type of post. Maybe I shouldn't have done this type of content. Oh my God, this is so boring. I'm not impressed by this. In terms of like the quality of writing, it is better than Write Sonic and ChatGPT. It doesn't read so AI-y, <laughs> but it's still, maybe it has to do with the type of post that I gave it. So I'm gonna try something else. I'm also gonna scan it using originality.ai, which is giving it a 100% AI score. Did I just waste $250? And then, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it <laughs> with Grammarly, like there's mistakes in here. Okay, that's not very good. Let's make a different project. Let's just do an imaginary project for someone who is not my client. There's like a hair extension brand that I'm thinking of, but of course, like, I don't know what it's called. Uh, how, how to care for your hair extensions. Okay, maybe this would work. Goldilocks. And just to be clear, I do not work with this client. I'm just making this up off the top of my head. Goldilocks. This is the URL, targeting, and what do they sell here? They are a high-end hair care brand. Well, if they're luxury hair care, then they shouldn't be selling bundles. And that's my free, this is two words. That is my free <laughs> marketing advice for the day. Because bundles cheapen your product and when you are a luxury brand you can never cheapen your product millennial women with high incomes who are looking for a hair care brand that offers a luxury a luxurious self-care experience I just am making stuff up. Let's do feminine as the tone of voice on this. I think that will be the right thing. Now we can add content again. Let's do it from a keyword again. Let's do spring hair care routine because I just did that the other day for a different client. It seems like you need to have like an SEO, someone doing SEO for this. Like I don't, it doesn't seem like they like offer the SEO piece of the pie. So you need to have like an SEO tool or an SEO person or be able to do SEO research yourself in order to find the kinds of things that you want to target. I think that by doing the URL, you can just like pull an idea from one of your competitors and have it write something similar for you, I guess. We'll come back in 15 minutes or whatever and see how that went. And maybe hopefully this one will be like not so boring that I'll actually be able to read it. I should also find my glasses. Okay, it's been, I don't know, 15 minutes or whatever. Can this be saved? All right, let's open this up. All right, I'm gonna read this to you. As the new season approaches, it's important to review and refresh your spring hair care regimen in order to maintain healthy locks. With the warmer weather and increased humidity, our tresses can often become frizzy or flat. This blog post will guide you through various tips and product recommendations 
tailored for different hair types that will help combat these common issues. That's fine. I mean, it's something groundbreaking. It's fine. And this comprehensive guide will discuss how to choose the right dry shampoo for your specific hair type, as well as application techniques for optimal results. We'll also delve into strengthening treatments and deep conditioning methods, perfect for revitalizing brittle hair during the spring months. Furthermore, we'll explore ways to enhance natural texture with moisture rich products while maintaining scalp health throughout this transitional season. Does that not read so AI to you? Oh, well, it sounds like a robot wrote it. So it doesn't flow. It's just like, it sounds like what it thinks a writer would write like. You know what? I do see like beginner writers will write like this too. Like they're just trying to learn and they don't have like their own voice yet. They don't have good flow. And that's something that can't really be taught. That's something you just develop as you practice and get better at writing. Like this table of contents, look how long this is. Like this is too much. I should have said like a thousand words. Combating frizz and flatness. Spring often brings frizz and flatness for those with finer hair types. Expert hairstylist Hoffman and Kiesling. Who the f are they? Ugh, I want to give this a fair shot, but I'm like, this is not good. And this is like highway robbery that they don't have a free trial to this. And they're charging at minimum $250 for the same sh AI content that everybody else is producing. I mean, maybe I'm not doing a good job of prompting it, but you're always gonna have that with AI is it just hallucinates facts. So like, is this a real like team of people? Is this real? No, this is completely made up. These people do not exist. Now I can see where this came from, is from this refreshing your 2023 spring hair routine. I can see it came from that, which I referenced in the post that I wrote on the same subject, but that doesn't make any sense that it just has their last names. Okay. <sighs> yeah, while maintaining a luxurious self-care experience to ensure you get the best results. Oh so it, it basically just used the content that I input about what the brand was. This is so bad. The other issue with AI is like the lack of taste. There's a certain level of taste that goes into well-written content and this has no taste. And like, look, it's recommending other brands. It should just be recommending the products that this brand makes. This is bad. You know, another thing that's an issue with AI, it requires so much editing. And as a writer, like I hate editing. I find editing more exhausting than just writing it myself. And that's actually an experiment I've been doing recently where I like time myself from start to finish, how long does it take me to write a blog post versus how long does it take me to have ChatGPT help me write a blog post? And it takes me less time to just write it myself because I spend so much time editing ChatGPT to make it decent. I think that they said that you could rewrite it. How do I rewrite this whole thing? I'm not happy with it. I mean, it's 5,000 words. Like no one wants a 5,000 word blog post on a spring hair care routine. That's outrageous. Imagine that this is the future of the internet. Like when you Google something simple, you get a 5,000 word blog post and that's what ranks first because there's different like theories on SEO, but a lot of people believe that it's just like the longest post will rank. And length is important, but also so is like usability by the reader. And if I'm like, I just want to know like how to keep my hair from being frizzy in the spring, I don't wanna read 5,000 words. In a world where people's attention spans are so short, it's like we're going in the opposite direction with written content online. And I don't know that that really makes sense. Like, oh, I think we want things that are like punchier and like easier to digest and get to the point, which this does not. I'm gonna try something else. Let's try something else. That was so bad. Let's, what are these? What does all this mean? I'm legit gonna ask for my money back. This is so bad. Let's. Do one for the freelance writer's guide, I guess. What is this post about? What is this website about? I don't know. What does it say on the freelance writer's guide? Men and women ages 18 to 35 who are 
Okay, let's do a, maybe if we do a better tone of voice. How about witty? Let's see how it does witty. And I think in the past, one of the issues is that these have just been way too long. So let's do one that has a shorter word count range. But what's interesting is I put 2000 to 3004 as they recommended, and it created a 5,000 word post instead. So like, thanks, but that really wasn't necessary. You know, it's not the length, it's how you use it. Um, Let's try from an existing blog post URL. Let's just get started as a freelance copywriter. Let's just see like who has that and just copy. Okay, so this fresh books, this fresh books blog post has the top spot right now. So let's just add that. So I'm hoping because it's rewriting an existing blog post, it will be better. Oh my god, I forgot we're gonna have to wait 15 minutes again. It's not looking good, you guys. Well, I mean, it is looking good for us writers, but it's this is not looking like it's going to be a positive review, is what I want to say. Which I don't like being negative. All right, well, I guess I'll report back in 15 minutes or so. I can't believe how big you are. No need to get up. No need to get up. Okay, um, hopefully third time is a charm on this. It would be cool if this worked, you know? At least for me. Oh my god, it's so bad already. Oh no. It's so bad. It's so bad. I wish there was a way to like just go back and change the prompt or something. They also made this 3,600 words long, but the optimization score is only 67. Let's see what their AI detector says on this. Highly likely to be human, according to them, on their own AI detector. But let's just see what this intro comes across as to originality.ai, which frankly I trust because I have used it a lot, like with different variations of me using ChatGPT and editing and coming up with my own content. And I will say it's pretty accurate. I know I used it and it knows too. Let me just read you this sentence and you can just decide yourself what's wrong with this. Launching a copywriting venture can be an electrifying and gratifying pursuit for those with enthusiasm for writing and advertising. In this comprehensive guide, we will explore the essential steps to establish a successful freelance copywriting business, helping you to turn your skills into a profitable venture. I guess it's not that bad, but the use of the word electrifying makes me want to lobotomize myself. Okay, from developing a plan of action that includes defining your niche and setting growth goals to showcasing your writing samples in an online portfolio, our step-by-step -step guide will provide valuable insights on how to start copywriting businesses effectively. We'll also discuss, discuss crucial aspects such as setting competitive rates based on experience level and location, preparing legally binding contracts and invoices. Oh great, it's gonna give legal advice. As well as marketing yourself through targeted pitch emails and industry specific groups on LinkedIn. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna publish this on my website and I'll link it below and you can read it and tell me what you think. Like you can just make your own decision. Uh, I'm not gonna touch it, I'm not gonna edit it because what they say on this website, their whole shtick is that it is supposed to be good to go, like immediately. I shouldn't have to edit it in conclusion. So I'm gonna put this on my website. Y'all can just make a decision by yourselves, I guess. I wonder how these jump links work. Like that should be toward, that is incorrect. Develop a plan of action. You know what else I wanna see is like how this actually performs like in Google Analytics. So we'll try it, we'll try it. That will not be included in this YouTube video, obviously, um, but I'll just be curious to see how it performs. Is content at scale worth it? I would say no because it's not that good. Um, it, it's definitely not worth $250 a month, especially like because those first two posts were so bad. It's also very detectably AI with even, you know, just reading it. Like I don't need an AI detector to be able to tell you that that's AI. I would say that it is, the content is more well-written than ChatGPT and definitely WriteSonic, but like other AI writing services that I have tested, 
you know, it's not gonna have any revolutionary new insights to provide. The number one thing that Google is looking for is like providing valuable content to readers. I would say that this guide is pretty thorough, but there's mistakes in it. It's not entertaining. It's not like presenting the information in an entertaining way the way I would if I were writing this. And it's also, it doesn't mimic my voice at all, even though I gave it the content from my website, which I wrote. So I do not think that this is worth it. There are certain use cases where this might be helpful. So for me, like SEO, the SEO blogs that I publish on the Freelance Writer's Guide, that's not our main driver of getting traffic, of connecting with new people to be in part of the community. Like I would say like we mostly get people through social media and YouTube. I don't consider YouTube social media. I think it's, I think it's something else. That's how we get the, the majority of our viewers, subscribers, you know, new people in our community, that's where they come from. To me, like, I don't need to like invest heavily in my SEO strategy. Frankly, I find this kind of content to be like tacky. That's just me. But if you were a business who was very heavily invested in this type of work and you also weren't trying to be like some kind of thought leader or have original ideas, <laughs> then this would be fine. If you just need a lot of cheap, cheaply produced shallow content for some reason, then I guess content at scale would work for you. But would it really be cheaper than just hiring writers? I don't know. So, okay, my overall review of this platform is eh, it's fine, I guess. I think it's way overpriced, like outrageously so. And the fact that there's no free trial is a matter for the police. Like that is outrageous because if I had tried this, I would have never spent money on this, especially $250. And that's the lowest price that they have. Like I said, I will post this on my website, thefreelancewritersguide.com, which will be linked below. You can tell me what you think. I think it kind of sucks, but you know, that's my opinion. And that's why you clicked on this video, for my opinion. Thank you. All right, cool. Well, that's about it for me today. Uh, I'm gonna contemplate my existence. Actually, I'm just really hungry. If you like this video, subscribe. I have more videos about freelance copywriting, freelancing in general, and you know, I think I'm gonna start adding like other streams of online income or like passive streams of income, different ways of making money, hustling on the internet. Um, so if you have any ideas that you want me to try, please let me know. I <laughs> One thing I'm gonna try soon is starting a Depop store. I think it's going to be a massive waste of time, but we will find out. All right, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and uh, like, subscribe, watch for deer. Okay, bye.